On Up With Krem, this year's Ironman at Lake Coeur d'Alene is less than a month away. We're giving you a look at the course in just a couple of minutes. And we're taking you outside on this Monday morning. We have scattered showers around the inland northwest as we speak. I'll let you know what those mean for our ongoing drought. Plus, an inspiring story about life after addiction from a soon-to-be graduate of UW. By the time I was 15 years old, I was a full-blown drug addict. We'll tell you about her transformative story and the impact it's having across the Up with Krim begins now. Well, the weather has cooled down, but it won't be long before we are wondering where to cool down this summer. Luckily, splash pads across Spokane are opening up. Spokane Parks and Rec tweeted that splash pads at Audubon, Merkel, Friendship, Pacific, and Riverfront Park are open. Nicole Hernandez will tell us when we can expect the other splash pads around town to open up too. Well, good morning. Happy Monday, everyone. So glad to have you here with us on Up With Krem. I'm Tim Pham alongside Jeremy Lagu. Jeremy, did you have a good weekend? Oh, absolutely. What about you, Tim? It wasn't bad. Uh, a little bit cooler this weekend, not as hot as the week before, but not complaining. Yeah, no doubt about it. Yesterday got cool enough that I went, ah, it's a little too cold and cloudy to get outside and do yard work. So a nice little break. But if you have yard work to do, next few days okay. going off for some time in this morning, Tim. How about nature's sprinkler? Oh, I like that. Yeah. Save on my water bill. There you go. You can see the, oh, I would say juicy looking clouds, the mm, rain juicy. clouds off in the distance. Yeah. yeah, finding words to describe clouds is sometimes difficult, but here we go. We're in the seven o'clock hour, even if just barely, but it's a cool and cloudy start to the week. Temperatures in the mid forties in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene. 45 in Sandpoint, you're on the South Hill and rain is coming down. I just stepped outside and took a deep breath and went, oh yeah, it smells like rain. I had to double check. One of my producers says, I think it smells like rain out there. And I went, well, probably, but I stepped outside and it definitely does. Temps, well, they're going to be on the rise as wind calms down throughout the day today. We'll see some isolated, stronger gusts this morning. And there is some of that moisture. Notice the big band kind of working its way out to our east now. So we're pretty much done with it as this continues to move out. So step toe butte, you're in the heavier rain now. That rain now moving over towards state line and into Coeur d'Alene, Spokane Valley. I think you have a little bit longer with some of that rain, but for the most part, it's winding down. Newport, you're in the rain. Sandpoint, you're going to be in the rain a little bit longer. Notice by 9 a.m. most of that rain moves into North Idaho. We'll see a couple of spots a little south of Spokane. But for the most part, that's it. And then we'll start to see that mix of clouds and sunshine later on today. And with that cloud sunshine mix, what we wind up getting here in Spokane is temps climbing into the mid 60s. It's going to be a little bit warmer than we were yesterday. And our warm up continues as we head into the day on Tuesday. We have an update now on the fire burning near I-90 near Vantage. The Grant County Sheriff's Office's crews were working overnight to contain the blaze and clean up the scene. The Sheriff's Office tweeted an update last night saying the fire is contained and in the mop up phase. The cause of the fire is still unknown and if you're driving in this area, troopers are still asking that you reduce your speed and watch for responding emergency crews. With that, wildfire season is well underway, which means so are burn restrictions. Spokane County is currently under a low fire danger with rule and permit burns banned. Unauthorized open burning and recreational fires are not allowed until the order is lifted. Manufactured portable fireplaces, barbecues and patio warmers are still OK, as long as they are designated and approved campfires at parks and campgrounds. If someone is found with an illegal burn, they could be charged with a misdemeanor and you can go to the Washington DNR burn portal to check on local burn restrictions. We are jamming on a Monday, oh, yeah. Jeremy. <laughs> I like that music. Well, one of the most difficult one day sporting events in the world is coming to Coeur d'Alene. The Ironman is making its return to North Idaho in just three weeks. Brandon T. Jones is joining us from Coeur d'Alene to talk about the course athletes will compete on later this month. Good morning, Tim, Jeremy. Yeah, I'm live in Coeur d'Alene this morning where athletes from all over the world will be gathering here in Cooney County. In just 20 days, this race is absolutely historic and I can't imagine what type of preparation and hard work goes into it. And just right behind me, this is where all of it 
begins. So let's take a closer look at the course. So the first leg of the race is a 2.4 mile swim across the lake and swimmers will take off from the city park and swim two laps along the boat docks outside of the resort. After they make it back to the beach, they'll transition to the bike course. Athletes will ride 112 miles on a route through downtown and along US 95. The last leg before the finish line is a 26.2 mile run through the city. Runners will start near McCune Park and run east along the Centennial Trail. The course will end with an iconic and downhill finish on Sherman Avenue downtown. So later in this morning, I'll talk to you about what my conversation was like with the volunteer director for this race because they desperately need volunteers to help sign up and help some of these top, top athletes from across the world. So if you're interested in volunteering, please text us the word Ironman to 509-448-2000. Tim, Jeremy. Brandon, thanks so much. It looks like someone's training right behind him too. All right, time for your morning rush now. More news in less time. The Kootenai County Sheriff's Office is searching for the person who set fire to a coaster at Silverwood Theme Park. A spokesperson at Silverwood says the suspect cut a hole in a fence and set fire terror and they set it on fire. Now, a security guard discovered the flame around 30 in the morning on Saturday and put it out with a fire extinguisher. The coaster was only slightly damaged and was repaired before the park opened Saturday morning. Silverwood's director of marketing says that the other coasters were inspected as well. They are asking anyone who may have information to call Kootenai County Sheriff's Office. And so far, there's no timeline on when the U.S.-Canadian border will reopen. Now, some Washington families are saying enough is enough. On Saturday, people gathered on both sides along the border near a small community of Linden to push for the border to reopen. They say they've been cut off from loved ones for more than a year and believe with the success of the vaccine rollout, it's time to allow families to reconnect. Kind of makes me angry, really, and, and sad. It's just, it's just not right. Saturday marked the third weekend the group gathered and they said they'll continue to come out as long as the border remains closed. And the state will be watching out for Asian giant hornets this summer. Starting next month, Washdot crews will help the Department of Agriculture set up traps for the hornets along highways. They will be monitored throughout fall. And the Mariners started their own incentive program, but only for those who get vaccinated at the park. All you have to do is get your shot between June 14th and June 23rd. You'll automatically get a free pair of tickets to an upcoming M's game and a $20 Amazon gift card. By the way, the state reports it's 54% of people are fully vaccinated. That's among those who are eligible and 63% have initiated their vaccination process, meaning they've received at least one dose. That's your Morning Rush. More news in less time. Let us know what's happening in your neighborhood by using the hashtag UpWithCrem on social media. And still ahead, Amazon is preparing to launch a new service. Coming up in our next half hour on Up With Creme, how you can kick Amazon's sidewalk to the curb. And of course, we're going to take you outside and talk a changing weather pattern. Oh, today's not going to feel anything like it did on this day last week. We're expecting highs in the 60s for now. But it should start to warm up by later on this week and you might be ready to cool off this weekend. We have new guidelines from the governor and they've allowed the city to reopen more splash pads right before a cold front hit our region. But kids may soon be ready to celebrate the end of school year and do so on one of those splash pads later on this week.